Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today I'm going to be doing another craft podcast for you. I believe this is episode number four, so yay! Um, I've made it four episodes in. I'm super excited and you guys seem to be loving this as well. So in this podcast, if you're new, I share all of my crafting things. So I like to cross stitch, knit. Of course, I like to sew. You guys all know that probably. Um, I've also done a little bit of crocheting. Um, some yarn spinning and all kinds of fun things like that. So that is what I will be sharing with you today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm gonna start off this time with cross stitch. Last time I didn't share any cross stitch because um, I hadn't had a chance to work on it but I have since the last one. And by the way, if you're interested in making this cute little bag, this is a free tutorial on my channel. I think I called it the cross stitch bag or something because I'm super creative with names like that. Also, forgive my hair. I've got roots. I think you probably all have roots right now. Uh, be kind with the hair comments. Friends, hopefully you don't care about my hair. You're not here to see my hair. You're here to see the fun stuff. So I am really excited about this. I have actually made quite a bit of progress on my cross stitch. And this one is by Country Cottage Needleworks. And this is called... Um, Snowy Reindeer, and it's part of her Frosty Forest series. So that's what it should look like when I'm done. So I still have a bunch of white snowflakes up here to do, and then I still have some of the trees down here. But I did get my little reindeer done, and this cute little banner up on top. And so I'm really excited. Um, I am learning that cross stitch takes a really long time, um, or it takes me a really long time. I don't know if it takes you guys a really long time. I feel like some of the other podcasters for Cross Dish I watch are like whipping through things like crazy. Um, it could be because I do about 25 different crafts, and so I don't just spend all my time on this. Um, but I have enjoyed kind of sitting down. We've been doing movies and things like that with the family, and so I'll kind of do this as we go. Um, if we are doing movie nights, I do have to use glasses and I showed these before, but these are just my little Vivilux clip on lights and they just clip right on to my glasses and then I can kind of see what I'm doing. I've also seen those ones that go around your neck. Um, I almost kind of want to get those because the glasses ones I feel like I'm constantly fiddling with because they're not pointing in the right direction. But anyways, whatever. But that is it for my cross stitch. I only have one project I'm working on. When I first started this, um, I bought them all. There are nine different little squares in here. And it's been a while since I showed it, so I'll go through and show them all. Um, I was thinking, I started this I think in November, and I was like, oh, this will be a really fun Christmas project. I'll get through all of these before Christmas, and I'll have a cute little pillow, or maybe some ornaments to hang on my tree. And it is now April 129th. I don't know what day it is. It's the end of April. And this is how far I am. So it's okay. I'm not in like a rush or anything. I just didn't realize that it was gonna take as long as it takes. Also, I'm really slow because I'm learning and brand new to this, so, and that's okay. I'm enjoying it still and enjoying the process. And I'm really excited that I even made that much progress. So since I just started this podcast, it's relatively new, but I've been quilting for kind of a long time. I wanted to just showcase some of my favorite projects in each of these podcasts. And then maybe if you're a new viewer, you can see something that maybe was a little bit older that you didn't know about. So what I'm going to be showcasing is today is my vintage glory block. Now this vintage truck is started out as a vintage Christmas truck and it had a Christmas tree. And then as you can see back here on my wall, I've got my vintage spring trucks up and this is a full quilt. And I'll link my um, vintage spring quilt in the description box below this video because people are always asking. But this one I just made one panel and I was thinking this year that I might actually make it into a full quilt. So if you're interested in having a vintage glory full quilt, let me know and I'll put something fun in between the trucks, maybe houses or bigger flags or something. I don't know. Let me know. Leave me a comment with your fun ideas for my middle blocks and I'll see if I can put one together. But this is probably one of my all time favorite quilt blocks that I've designed. It's super cute and this just right now sells a mini it's called vintage glory um, but I love it I have it hanging on my little mini wall of quilts over here which um, if you've seen my sewing room studio tour you'll have seen um, but this one is just so cute and it brings me so much joy and so I just wanted to share that with you today and then the next thing that I've been working on is my sew sampler barn quilt blocks and I don't have a whole lot of these done for some reason this quilt is taking me longer I think because I've been filming a bunch of videos and I just haven't had time to work on it um, and also because each time you make one you're making this square down here um, I already have the roofs, all the roofs and all the sides finished, but then these inside squares right here, this is hard to do, um, are all different. And so it's like you have to cut out the pieces each time. And normally when I do a quilt, I get the whole thing cut out and then I just sew like a mad woman until it's done. Um, but I can't really do that on these. I have to just kind of individually do them. Also, I don't know if you can see 
the jacks fur on these, but he has been laying on these blocks and, oh God, anyway. So here's one I finished. And if you're curious, these are available on fatquartershop.com. This was their um, barn block sew along from one of their sew sampler quilts. And each month they send you out a recipe card for a new block. And then at the end, you'll have 12 different blocks that you can put together in a sampler quilt. And I've made a couple of them uh, repeats because I'm going to make this quilt a little bit larger than what um, they are saying because I'm hoping to put it on my bed. Although now with Jack's laying all over these blocks, this fabric, I don't know if it's just because it hasn't been washed yet, but it is collecting Jack's fur like nobody's business. And he does lay on our bed. And so I'm worried that I'm going to just not like having it so I might end up I'm really excited for this quilt I love how it's turning out but I might not be able to put it on our, our bed I might just have to hang it somewhere or something because whatever this fabric is it is attracting fur like nobody's business and he is black and white so the black gets the white fur and the white gets the black fur and it's like not good anyways that's how many blocks I have I think I have one two three four five six seven eight nine blocks done um, and I probably am going to be doing about, I'm probably about halfway. I think I want around 20 blocks. I haven't fully decided. And then I think I'm just going to do wider sashing and then possibly a wider border just to make it bigger. So we have a queen size um, bed or a king size bed. And so it needs to be big enough to fit across our bed. So, but I'm really excited about it. Um, I think also I'm not as excited about the monochromatic sewing because it's just not that exciting when you're doing it. But then when you see the finished blocks, um, I do really like them and I think it'll be a really cool quilt. So I'm just having to kind of push through this one, but that's okay. I think I'm really going to love the end product. But that's all the quilting I've done so far since the last podcast. Um, I have done a lot of sewing and you've probably seen some of these tutorials popping up. I have some really fun things to show you. So this first one is my drawstring squishy um, two bat or no, three. I've made three of these now. So I think the first one was a zipper um, and then the second one I did was a drawstring and then this one is a drawstring but it's also got these faux leather handles on it which I love and um, I also did I make this one this one might be a little bit bigger because I wanted a bit bigger bag um, and then of course it's the two-tone versus like a patchwork or something like that um, and these leather straps I think just make it really cute as well this is perfect for knitting crochet, stitching, um, just holding any of your fun stuff. And really, if you just wanted a cute little purse to run to the store, which none of us can do right now or whatever, um, it would also be cute for that. My daughters like to keep, uh, my youngest likes to keep her bitty baby things in here and tote it around like a little bag. So anyways, this is the first one. This one already released. It released a couple of weeks ago, um, and this was the Drawstring Squishy 3 bag. So just check my channel and you'll be able to find that. And then I forgot to mention this one is using um, just kind of a canvas natural fabric here on the bottom. And then this top one is called Wanderings by Poppy Cotton. And it is one of my new favorite lines. I love their prints. They're just so beautiful and just kind of got a calming vibe to them. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love this. So Wanderings by Poppy Cotton. So that's that one. I also made this one for some of my projects because I need more projects bags kind of always. Um, and this is another line by Poppy Cotton. This one is called um, Prairie Sister, I believe. And then I just have a cute gingham on the back. And then what's in the inside? Oh, I love this inside. Okay. Let me see if I can show you because it's harder to show the insides of bags. But this is called Maker, I believe, by um, Art Gallery fabrics and then there there's the poppy cotton fabric inside for the little pocket inside as well um, but this was another tutorial that's free on my channel and I think I just called it draw strawstring squishy with a pocket because I added this front pocket on the outside and I like to put things like either maybe my iPad or my pattern or anything larger like that on the outside and then I'll put all of my um, you know knitting supplies and all that kind of stuff on the inside so here's another one. Oh, and I use this really cute there we go. I use this cute Moda ribbon on this one. And these are what come if you buy fat quarter bundles or uh, fat eighth bundles. They always come tied in a really pretty ribbon. And so I always keep those ribbons whenever I use that fabric. And I just keep them in a jar over there. And then I use them for drawstrings and other fun little um, notions and things like that that I do. So um, definitely hang on to your ribbons. Don't throw those away. They're super cute drawstrings. So that is another one I made. 
And then I also made this one. This one I didn't do anything fancy with because I really loved this fabric. So I just did a solid outside. And then I did these kind of leather ties for my drawstring. And I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this fabric line is called Pippa by Anna Davis. And I, the reason I'm not 100% sure is because it was in my stash for a while and I just recently found it and thought it would be a really cute bag. Um, but it was in some fat quarters with other ones that kind of matched and that's what they said. But this one didn't have anything on the um, selvage. So sorry, but if I think it's called Pippa by Anna Davis. And this has literally been in my stash for like a few years. So I don't know if you can get it anymore. Um, but I just thought it was so pretty. And then on the inside, I just have... Um, this kind of beige-ish natural color and it's got these little white checks on it so super cute. I also like doing the um, leather drawstrings just because they just look nice and natural and they're soft and pliable and I think they just make the bag a little squishier. So this one is empty right now but I will be filling it with some fun knitting goodies soon. My next project and this one will be releasing soon if it hasn't already um, but I do have a make your own market bag. These are nice good size bags. Um, and this is a really quick and pretty easy tutorial. Uh, so I was really excited about this. This fabric um, was actually, it's a lighter kind of canvasy print from Sweetwater Fabrics. And it actually came as a huge panel. And there's four really cool prints on it. Or no, six prints. Six? I think there's six prints on the panel. And so you can cut them apart and make them into pillows or something else fun. I decided to make them into one of these um, little market bags because I love using reusable bags. Um, and these are this one is really good size, you guys, and it doesn't have any raw edges in it or anything. So if it's not up yet, it will be soon. And I was super creative and I think I just called it like Erica's DIY market bag. I can't remember. Um, but it's really fun and easy, turned out cute, and I'm loving the Sweetwater bag panels because they're absolutely adorable. So that's it for my bag making, um, and I do have a couple cute little pouches that I want to show you. So this one just released. You've probably already seen it. I called this one my daisy pouch, and it's got this cute little zipper on the front with a lined front pocket, so you can put some goodies in there. And then I just did this little leather tie and a button closure, so it's super simple and easy. And then on the inside, um, you could leave this pocket totally open, or I did vertical stitching every one and a half inches, I believe, and it was perfect for my DPNs. So this was a really cute and fun, easy project. Um, and again, I used Poppy Cotton's line. This is their new line called Daisy May. And that is why I um, called it the Daisy Pouch, because as you have noticed probably, I'm super creative with my naming conventions. And here's what the Daisy May looks like. It's a really cute, fun line, and I love it. And I just have this little fat quarter bundle of it. Um, I've just made this. I've got a couple other little goodies over here that I'm going to make with it, but it's just really sweet, and I'm loving their fabric. So that was that one. That one was called the Daisy Pouch, and that one is already released. And then I have this other one too, and I called this Erica's Roll Up Needle Case. <laughs> you guys, I need some naming ideas. If you have a better name, leave them below because I'm like the worst at naming projects. I love making fun stuff and then coming up with names is like whatever. So this one, you just can unroll like this, flap it open, and then you can just keep your knitting needles, um, crochet hooks. You can also do circulars. This is really good for circulars. Um, you could even put your interchangeables in here if you wanted as well. And for this one, I just used a nice low volume print on the inside. And then this is a kind of a canvas, like a light canvas that I just got from, um, I think I got it from Joann's. And that just makes it a little bit more sturdy, but I didn't do any kind of interfacing or anything on this one. I wanted it to be kind of softer and pliable. And you can roll it up, you can fold it up. Um, and yeah, it's just perfect for keeping all of your little supplies in. And then I just have this double tie here. You can just wrap it around and tuck your tie in. And then you have a cute little closed package. And you can just throw this in your bag and you're good to go. So this one um, I believe will be up before this video. If it's not, it will be coming really quickly afterward. Okay, I think that's it for all of my sewing stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and move into some of my knitting. I've got a couple finishes and then a couple of things that I just completely tore out and started over. So, uh, this first one, I'll show you my bag. This first one is in just one of my regular drawstring squishy bags and I just did a quilt as you go panel for this and this I think is a tutorial, did I put this up? 
I don't know if I did this as a tutorial. I don't think I did because I've already got this um, tutorial on my website, but it's just a quilt as you go panel. I just made it the right size for the drawstring squishy bag and then sewed it as normal. But inside here, I have finished a hat to go with my cozy winter shawl. So here's the yarn I used. It's called um, Cumulus by Jupiter. Juniper Moon Farm, and this is in the Sandy Castle colorway. And this is the same colorway that I knit my um, winter cozy shawl in, and I wanted a hat to match, so I got the same yarn, and then I didn't see a hat pattern that matched on her website, so I made one up. And if you'd like, I'll try and write it up for you. It's a pretty easy cable hat pattern. And this yarn, I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's got a little bit of a halo on there and it's super squishy and soft and comfy. And I have not added a pom-pom yet on it. Um, I think, I haven't decided because, I don't know. I kind of have so many hats with pom-poms, I almost kind of just wanted to leave this one. Uh, but this is what it looks like. And this one fits me really, really well. I have a little bit of a smaller head, and so sometimes my hats are just a little bit big, but then they fit the rest of my family. So um, this one fits really well, and this yarn is just so soft, and it's um, got a little bit of a stretch to it. It's got a little bit of a halo, and it just feels, it feels kind of alpaca-y, but without being the massive stretch that alpaca has. Um, and so I'm really loving this. Does it say what it is? It's 94% cotton and 6% nylon, so. There you go. So yeah, so this is one of my latest finishes. This is probably one of my favorite hats that I've done to date. It was a lot of fun. The cables are really easy. If you're new for cabling, this could not be easier. Um, it was just, it's a probably a great project to learn cabling on, even in my opinion, because you're kind of, it's not a lot, um, but it's enough that you're getting good practice. So anyways, I think I'm probably gonna name this the Cumulus hat because Cumulus yarn, I don't know. If you guys have any ideas for a name for this hat, leave them in a comment below. And yeah, if you, if I use your name, maybe we'll give away a little something fun. So anyways, this is one of my first finishes and I'm not gonna leave it on because it's about, I wanna say 85 here or 80, somewhere in there. It is hot today and I am like already hot in here with all these lights and everything. So I should probably also stop looking down because dang. My next nitty project is in this cute drawstring bag. I'm telling you guys, this drawstring two bag is the best. It's a great size and I just literally have all my projects in here. This fabric is so cute and I really wish I would have bought more when it came out, but I didn't and I'm not sure if I can get any more. I've been kind of stalking Etsy, but I can't find any. But it's called Sugar Creek by Cory Yoder and I just love the vibe of the fabric. It is so like kind of springy and summery and happy and I just want to do a whole quilt out of it, but I do not have enough left. I think I only got a mini charm. I either got a charm pack or a mini charm and then a couple of fat quarters because I was somewhere and I was like, oh, this is cute. And that was the last I saw of it. So unfortunately, I wish I would have got more. Um, again, I used my Moda ribbon as my drawstring. So you'll see that as a trend. Um, and then I think I showed these last time, but I think I have made some progress. I can't remember because it's been a little bit since my last podcast. But I did finish one of my Jingle Balls um, socks here. And I'm using the free Vanilla Latte sock pattern. This is by Virginia Rose Jeans. I believe, and this is free on um, Ravelry, so you can just go and download it for free, and it's just got this simple design on it. But I did finish one, and I'm sure I showed this last time, um, and then I'll show you my progress on my second, which is good for me, because I usually don't finish my second socks. Here is my Jingle Balls kit. This was the Grocery Girls 2019 um, Christmas kit that you could get, and so I'm really loving this yarn. And if I have enough left over, we'll see, then maybe I'll do like a little quick little hat or something. Um, maybe I can use it for some brims. I don't know how much I'll have left over, but I really haven't used much of these at all, these accent ones, so I think I could do something fun when I'm done with my second sock here. But here is the progress. And it's, <laughs> forgive me if I showed this last time. I honestly, I don't remember. But here's how far I've gotten. So not super far, but farther than normal for me. And I just did a simple two by two ribbing down here. Um, I think that's what the pattern called for. I don't remember. I just kind of did it on my own and then started with her pattern. Um, and this is on my Chow Goose. These are my favorite needles, mainly because I really like the needle, but really because I love the cord. The cords don't have any memory and they just go wherever you want them to go and so you don't feel like you're fighting with your cord. So 
that is the update on my little socks. And I don't know, we'll see if I finish that second sock before Christmas this year. So this next make I wanna show, and I actually didn't make this, but my daughter did. She is 14. Um, she just turned 14, and she I've asked her if she wants to learn how to knit on more than one occasion. She has said no, and since we've been home on the quarantine, she needed to learn something new as part of an assignment for one of her classes. And so she chose to learn how to knit, and so I gave her some nice, chunky yarn. Here it is, it's this uh, just butter cream alpaca, Lux Craft, it's not 100% alpaca, we got this at like a local yarn shop. Um, like a big box yarn shop. It's um, oh, 80% acrylic and 20% alpaca. So it's not bad, but I thought for her first project, this would probably be a really good one. And she knit this in approximately three days. Um, it took her, and then we added this cute little brown palm on top. And I think she did a great job. I was looking over this and I really don't see um, any mistakes. I mean, there might be a little bit of tension, you know, issues here and there on the ribbing. Um, but other than that, I don't think she made a single mistake on this hat. And this is literally her first project, you guys. So I'm so proud of her. And I think she's proud of herself as well. She loves it. It looks adorable on her. Um, if I remember, I'll stick some pictures in here of her wearing it because uh, she just looked so cute in this hat. And of course, now it's getting warm out so she get, can wear it for next winter. But I think she did a great job. So I just wanted to show it here on my podcast. And we just made this pattern up. She did a one-by-one one rib um, and then knit all the way to the top until we were about two inches away or so. And then we just did a simple decrease. If you're really interested in this particular hat, let me know. Actually, I have a hat that's very similar, um, free tutorial, so check that out um, on my channel. It's called like Easy Beginner Knit Hat or something, um, and it's um, a white hat, and it was really easy. And instead, the only thing that she did different was instead of making this brim long enough that she could fold it up, she just wanted it to be regular. And so she just didn't make the um, brim part as long, but otherwise pretty much the same pattern, so you can check that out. But yeah, she did a great job. And then here is the cozy winter shawl that I mentioned earlier that I knit that hat to go along with. Um, this one is by Melanie Meilinger, and I knit this one in the gray like you're seeing here. Um, and I love it. I used that cumulus yarn I just showed you for that hat. And I loved it so much that I really wanted to knit another one. And so I'm knitting another one. And I showed this, I think, in the first one. And I've worked on it a little bit since then, not a whole lot. But I'm just using this. Barocco Remix, and this is a recycled yarn made in France. It's in a medium four weight. And does it say what it's got in it? It's got nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, and linen. Um, and you can machine wash in cold water and um, on delicate and then lay flat to dry. It's 100% recycled fibers. Um, and it actually feels really cottony. Um, it feels really soft and yeah I actually am kind of excited to be working with this and so I haven't made a whole ton of progress on it here um, but I do have some progress to show you and this is currently on my likey needles if that's how you say it and I am so far this far on it and I love it. This pattern is actually, if you're looking for like a beginner cable pattern, it might be a little bit more than a beginner in my opinion as far as the cables go because um, you are doing this braid down the middle, which is, it's not harder, it's just more. So I think if you're gonna do um, first time cabling, um, you probably don't wanna do this. You wanna just do something where it just has these um, simple one directional cables on it. It also has some um, yarn overs in here and then the braid and then some other cabling on this side. So you really do kind of have to pay attention to which way you're cabling when you're doing this um, shawl. And um, I did mess it up the first time, but I did also learn how to go back and fix my cables. So that was definitely a good learning experience. And I think um, when you're first starting out, I never knew how to fix things. I always had to bring them into my knit shop. And now I'm feeling a little bit more brave and um, fun. I'm having a fun time fixing my own knitting. And I think it's a good skill to learn too. But anyways, that's how far I am on this. So not very far. I haven't even and made it I think I've made it through the first chart and I'm now onto the second chart I um, mean there's like three charts I think in this one and then you can just keep going until it's whatever size you want I think I did make my first one much longer than she suggested but I just wanted it to be really big and cozy um, so you can kind of customize this too so that is it for that one and that is again the cozy winter shawl by Melanie Meilinger Okay, and then my last knit finish is actually one that was originally socks. I was making these Pixel Rise socks by Kemper Ray, and I was loving them, but I was having such a hard time motiv motivating myself to work on them. I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. Um, it was just too 
I don't know. I was doing two up because I knew I would never knit the second one if I knit one. And so, and since I was using these little minis, um, I believe I said last time, I'll put below what the minis are because I can't remember what they're called. I think it was like a grunge paint palette and it might've been Stitched Together Studio um, that they came from. But I'm using these minis and I only had um, a certain set of minis. Here are all, here's all the, I'll show you all the yarns if I can hold them all up. Here's all the minis. They're super cute. I showed them in my last one, um, but I only had one of each color and I don't have a scale here to be able to um, separate them into halves. And so I was literally trying to knit one sock coming out of the middle and one sock coming out of the outside of the ball. And it was then when you're doing the color work and, and anyways, it's just too much. So I ripped that out and I'm really glad I did because instead I made a pixel rise beanie. So here it is. I made the pixel rise hat instead. And I literally finished this in a couple of days. Um, and I actually made it a little bit big. I probably should not have put this yellow on there. I probably should have stopped at the hot pink because it actually kind of, I mean, it's cute, but it does definitely have a, and the ball is really um, heavy too. So it kind of pulls on my, doesn't quite sit on the top of your head, I guess. Um, so, but it is really cute. I love the colors and I'm really glad that I ripped out the socks because as painful as it was to tear my socks out, um, I started on this, I immediately was enjoying the process so much more and I whipped this hat out um, just in a few days actually because um, color work is so much fun. It's like, oh, one more row, oh, one more color, you know, and you just, stuff flies off your needles. So anyways, I'm really excited about how it turned out. It's really cute. I do, um, wish that I had the socks because they're adorable. Pixel Rise hat, last thing off my needles. Jax is laying here eating all these little balls of yarn now, guys. By the way, I had somebody in my last video ask for a uh, video, video of just blooper reels of trying to sew with Jax, and I think I might try and put that together. If you would like to see that, um, like thumbs up and comment below. All right, so on to my stash acquisitions, acquisitions, stash acquisitions, I don't know, whatever, some of the stuff I bought. Okay, so this first one actually isn't something I bought. She actually sent it to me and I'm super excited to be working with Poppy Cotton now because I love their fabrics. And she offered to send me a couple of bundles um, just because she has liked what I've been making, which was really, really cool. So I'm gonna show you the latest bundle she sent me and this should be shipping to stores this week. Um, and by the time I get this edited and up, it should be in your stores. But this one is called Country Roads. So this is their new line. And it's just got these really soft kind of pink tones to it. They're really pretty. Um, and I just love their designs. The, the designs on the fabric are just so fun and um, just, I don't know. I find her fabric really relaxing. I don't know if it's just me or if you guys agree, but it's just really cute. Now, some of these aren't 100%. Like, I don't know if I love some of these prints. Um, and I think it's just the geometrics on them. I'm definitely more of like a floral person. And I really love these with the texts um so there's that and then i love the stripes but i think the for the most part i'm really um liking this particular line there's a couple more to go through here she's got these words in black these are so cute i think these word um prints would make really cute linings for bags or backings for a quilt oops i think i missed one in there Anyway, so that's their new line. It's called Country Roads, and it should be in a store near you at this point, and you can kind of stay tuned and look forward to some of the things I will be using to make. Um, I'll be using some of her fabric in some of my upcoming tutorials. So that is one of my stash acquisitions. And then I also, and this one I did purchase because I want to do one of their, I haven't decided, there's a star quilt, and I can't remember what it's called right now, um, but this one is, uh, what's it called, at home by Bonnie and Camille. And they have two different um, palettes. They have this kind of blue gray one and then they have one that is red and gray. Um, I wasn't as big of a fan as the reds, although I did see somebody put together a red, white, and blue out of this line and that I loved. I think it was the tans or something in there that was kind of making me eh on it. Uh, but I got this bundle um, because I want to make either, they have a star quilt and either I'll make hers or I'll just make my own. Um, but the star quilt was really cute, I thought. And so I got this for the border, for the outside border. And then I got this one for the binding. 
I love stripy binding. It is probably one of my favorites. And then I was going back and forth between a white or this aqua for the backing, and I decided to go with aqua. Um, but anyway, so those were my stash acquisitions for the month. I have a, I've been actually really good, and I haven't bought hardly anything. So here is the bundle that I got. So he'll be, here is what I will be using for my quilt blocks, and then my backing, my binding, and my outside border for the quilt. So I think that's it for all of my makes this time and my acquisitions and all that, but I did have a giveaway at the last podcast and I said I would announce it on this one. If you didn't see last time, I have a giveaway for this fun package from McPorter Farms. There's a ton of sewing and um, knitting notions in here. There's a ginormous palm, a unicorn horn, there's some stitch markers, some cable needles, all kinds of goodies. So the winner for that was from last time and it was from comments and I will try and get a hold of you, but Chris Renee makes and it looks like she even has a YouTube channel with a couple of podcast videos up. So if you are Chris Renee makes, please send me an email um, and you can send it to Erica at confessionsofahomeschooler.com. Let me know that you are our winner for this giveaway and then I will get this fun package shipped out for you. So I think that's it for this podcast, podcast episode four. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making these for you. I love filming them. They're a lot of fun. And as always, I will do my best to put links in the description box below the video for everything that I mentioned here and where you can get it. Um, so just click that show more link and there should be a list of all of the items that I've shown here today. So thank you so much for sticking around with me. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and I will see you next time. Whoa. Sorry about the crinkling. So much crinkling. Ooh, it's hot in here today. Seriously? Don't touch your face. Definitely don't stick your fingers in your mouth to get out first. Airplanes, we got lots of airplanes today. Are the fly are people flying again? I don't know, there's been so many airplanes. Um, let's see. Man, hairs are flying today. Okay, I'm sweating. Anyways, I think that's it, is that it? I'm always looking, oh, no. Ooh, I looked around. All right, well this is recording all this, so I just need to film in the end. You better edit that out. <laughs> There's an all kind of goodies in here. Blah. Um, <laughs> if you're new, oh my gosh.